President Muhammad Buhari has reacted to the illegal migration of Nigerians, declaring that all Nigerians stranded in Libya and other parts of the world will be brought home and rehabilitated. In a statement by the President's Senior Special Assistant in Media and Publicity, Garbashehu, the President vowed to reduce the number of Nigerians headed for Europe illegally through the Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean Sea by providing basic social amenities such as education, healthcare and food security at home. Buhari also reacted to the report of the death of 26 Nigerians in the Mediterranean Sea, saying it is very difficult to know the origin of the people who died while attempting the perilous journey across the Mediterranean because of lack of documentation. In the words of the President, but the evidence I have from the Senior Special Assistant on Diaspora and Foreign Affairs, Mrs. Abike Dabri Erewa, only three of them were identified as Nigerians. But I'll not be surprised if the majority of them we're Nigerians, end of quote. Data feeds are coming through in one place simultaneously on all our social media platforms, channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can follow us right now on m.channelstv.com and on Facebook as well. We've got all our platforms and social media covered. Be part of the show. Tweet at Gimba over CTV and use the hashtag State of the Nation to air your thoughts on the subject. In the meantime, the president has written the Nigerian Senate to request for the confirmation of nominees of the Code of Conduct Bureau, the CCB. Ten nominees for the chairman and membership positions were sent in compliance with Section 541 of the 1999 Constitution as amended in pursuance to Sections 1, Subsections 2 and 1, Subsections 3 of the Code of Conduct Bureau Act, LFN 2004. Now, the European Union has announced support for Nigeria's vision on the rule of law and the fight against corruption for the next four years. The union launched a four-year program to support the federal government's vision for the rule of law and its anti-corruption war. Head of the European Union delegation in Nigeria, Mr. Kurt Cornelis, says that the program will be implemented in four focus states of Lagos, Kano, Anambra and Adamawa states at the sum of 23 million euros. Is this the needed impetus in the fight against corruption? What impact will it have on the government's determination to root grafts in addition to the so many treaties to help Nigeria in this fight? It's prime time here in Lagos and this is State of the Nation. Welcome everyone in Nigeria and the rest of the world. I am Gimba Omar and this is State of the Nation. Right behind me, data feeds are still coming through, all in one place simultaneously on our social media platforms. Be part of the show, tweet at Gimba Omar CTV and use the hashtag State of the Nation to air your thoughts. An exclusive interview of the former chairman of the Task Force on Pension Reforms, Abdul, uh, Abdul Rashid Maina, has thrown a major challenge to the executive, especially the president, where Maina clearly was seeking for a private meeting with Mr. President for more revelations on the patient's phones currently ongoing. Ola Wale Martins, uh, Egbeola, is the National Publicity Secretary, Young Progressive Party. He joins me from our Buja studios. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the show at this time. You have been listening to these revelations and submissions of the AGF on the one hand, and indeed Maina himself. What are your thoughts as a young political party? Is there a political angle you see to these issues raised? Yes, thank you very much, Gimba. I want to say at this point that um, there's a political dimension to this whole issue. Um, what is laughable is not the fact that MENA was actually reinstated, but the fact that um, we have top brass, you know, government officials coming to you know, 
take this issue like shenanigans. At the level of the National Assembly, you could see what happened where the Attorney General of the Federation was actually, you know, um, feigning ignorance of the fact that he knows nothing about how men are actually, you know, came back to office. Um, that also, the HOS also, you know, feigned ignorance. And not only the HOS, um, we also have, um, um, what is it called? Uh, the other principal officers who also feign knowledge. But you know, um, it's political in the sense that how can this set of people tell Nigerians that they do not know how MENA was reinstated? It's an insult on our intellectual collectivism. And I want to say that um, this matter could have been better handled. But, but do you think that the president should grant MENA his request to see him privately? Yes, if I heard you right, you asked if the president should grant him the request yes. to see him privately. Yes. And personally, I'm not averse to that. Why? There's no issue as to whether it should be granted, you know. What should happen at this point is the fact that the president should create a platform where MENA will be made available to actually unveil things as regards this pension fraud. Whether you like it or not, this is the biggest issue in the nation as of today. And there's a need to get to the root of it. Now, if the president was terribly versed, has to set up a panel to investigate um, the SY um, um, secretary to the um, um, government of the Federation and the um, uh, uh, SY DG of the NIA, and I see no reason why MENA also should not be given that same platform and allow for people to be investigated so that we will unravel the issue behind this pension scam.